Hello and welcome to Unite and Prosper, where we will not be divided or conquered. And while you're watching this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share, share, share. It's the flipping and the flopping liberals. <laughs> I know we just had the Olympics end this past week, but it seems we still have gymnastics happening in the Democratic Party. What a difference a few years make. I got a few things to cover, so let's get started. The day Kamala got her presidential run handed to her by Nancy Pelosi and her United Kingdom anti-democracy way, the media just exploded with happiness, making Kamala the next Obama, but this time in a dress or in a pantsuit, if you will. Well, let's first look how the left-wing party felt about Kamala after a year and a half or so into her vice presidential run. So we have from the New York Magazine uh, back on well September 13th, 2023, not even a year ago, uh, the case for Biden to drop Kamala Harris. And Slate Magazine, November 20th of 2022, about halfway through her uh, vice presidential term. If Biden runs again, he should pick a new vice president. Kamala has had her chance. The Democrats need something different. And CNN, uh, November 18, 2021, about a year and a half, almost uh, well, a year and three quarters into her vice presidency, uh, exasperation and dysfunction inside Kamala Harris. Frustrating start as vice president. Start, and she's been almost two years into her vice president. And the Politico... Ah, uh, there's not a date on this one. Uh, okay, June 30th, 2021. So, a uh, year and a half into her vice residence. Politico, not a healthy environment. Kamala Harris, office rife with dissent. There is dysfunction inside the vice residence office. Aides and administration office say, officials say, and it's emanating from the top. And uh, she actually has a 92% uh, turnover rate with her employees. That um, that basically means that everybody that started with her from day one, 92% of them quit because she is hard to work for. She cusses at you and yells at you and yeah. You can look it up, 90% turnover rate. And the day Kamala gets her very early Christmas gift from Nancy and Friends, the left-wing media is going bonkers over the great Kamala Harris. Now tell me, doesn't she look so courageous? Such honor to be in her presence. If I didn't know any better, I think that was the woman that set the people free. What people, you ask? Doesn't matter, because they were people and we're set free. Okay, enough of that. Here's the real Kamala before she was put up on this very, very high pedestal. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. You know? What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. What's the other thing we know about this population? And it's a specific phase of life. Remember, age is more than a chronological fact. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. So you're now no longer are you necessarily keeping those private files in some file cabinet that's locked in the basement of the house. It's on your laptop and it's then therefore up here in this cloud that exist above us, right? Mm -hmm. It's no longer in a physical place. 
Ah, yes, the cloud. All your computer files are now up there with the birds, the flames, the rain, the cloud. Now let's look at her today, her latest flip and flop movement. First, her motor flip flop, where she was all for open borders, allowing millions and millions of unmetted illegal immigrants cross our border. And if you live in any of the cities that are now having to house them, you know just what I mean. Check out her sudden turn on her toughness by the southern border. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. So which Kamala will we get if she wins? The 2019 version or the 2024 version? Well, I can tell you one man that has not flipped or flopped since he first ran for president in 2015. Now, on this ad you just watched, the sheriff's department that was actually in that ad had a little bit to say about it. Here is the sheriff of Tulare County. This ad is deceiving, to say the least. I remember this particular case where we did a drug cartel or a drug trafficking organization where we worked with DEA. And the issue was is that in this particular situation, uh, she showed up. Uh, for a sound bite, she didn't shake anyone's hands, and she was she quickly left the the uh, briefing room. Uh, so for me in law enforcement to see my face uh, and image along with my law enforcement counterparts being represented as standing alongside Kamala Harris was truly disheartening. We do not support Kamala Harris. She has a history of not supporting law enforcement. And I just wanted to come out and say that for me in Tulare County, the sheriff of Tulare County, looking out for victims looking for someone who's going to support criminal justice and law enforcement that is best represented by donald trump and not kamala harris tax on tips now this is a big flippity floppity for kamala it's in her voting record today she says she'll get rid of taxes on tips well check this out harris casts tie-breaking vote allowing irs to tax tips scroll down a bit on August 7, 2022, Harris cast a tie-breaking vote in the Senate to pass the Inflation Reduction Act. It provided $80 billion in additional funding to the IRS to deploy agents to track the tips of service industry workers so they could be taxed. So she was the deciding vote to tax or make sure that the tips are being taxed properly by uh, employing hundreds of additional IRS agents just to go and check all the waiters and bartenders and waiters and anybody that gets tips. And now suddenly she wants to take that away. Flippity floppity flip. You see, somebody already had the no tax for tips in their agenda a couple of months before Kamala came up with it. I bet you can guess who real easy. <laughs> Looks like uh, just like Trump is with the border, Camilla is also with him on the tax on tips idea. Or she wants you to think she is. And it even gets better. Here's MSNBC trying to make it look like they both came up with this tip idea at the same time. Check out the dates of each of these snippets. Thing to raise the minimum wage. taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. I'm also doing no tax on tips. No tax on tips. So waiters, waitresses, caddies, uh, people that drive cars, people that get tips who have been harassed by this government, we're going to have no tax on tips. That's a big thing. Well, as you can see, one of them was uh, dated August 10th and the other was August 8th. You know, two days apart is what MSN wants you to think that they, uh, you know, they just came up pretty much at the same time. Well, in reality, the first time Trump came up with his original idea was June 9th, two months earlier. Here's the first time he brought this up at a rally. This is the first time I've said this. And for those hotel workers and people that get tips, you're going to be very happy. Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. So who would you believe? We have one person that says one thing, 
but her actions does uh, total opposite. And then we have another person that hadn't changed their tune or actions in eight years. So who would you believe? And for my last thing today, I can't have a video without talking about the big interview between Elon Musk and Donald Trump. I'm not going to play any snippets from that interview since it was over two hours long. And I don't think you want a two hour video to watch either. <laughs> Anyone can listen to the interview online if they want. So I will just talk about the response from the left that they had about it. Of course, there was a negative response led by Queen, I mean, Vice President Harris from the left. But here's what I think the negative responses are for. You see, Kamala hasn't had a press conference or even an interview since she was handed her presidential run. But Trump has been doing interviews from anyone on both sides all the time. The left might want you to think that Elon Musk is a conservative, but that is one thing he is not. He's even spoken many times that he is more of a libertarian. I mean, the man makes electric cars, solar panels. I mean, <laughs> you know, come on, people. But what really burns in the britches of the left is honesty. Camilla can't talk honestly, so she has to script her interviews, which means it takes your time to prepare. You know what you're going to have with Donald Trump. He's not changed his words since his first president to run 10 years ago. It's pretty well summed up like this. A person that always lies has many more notes to keep track of than a person that tells the truth. So if you're always telling the truth with your words, you can do an interview at the drop of a hat with anyone, anytime. But if you're on one that lies, you have to do a, you know, like a chameleon. You have to change your ways depending on who you're talking to and what you're talking about. So I think that mainly is the main reason why the Democrats are so mad about this interview, because how easily Trump can do interviews. I mean, he does, you know, hardball, softball. He, he does a heck of a lot more hardball than softball interviews. But uh, that's what I'm thinking is the main reason why the Democrats are so up in arms about him doing the interviews. And every time that uh, even the uh, you know, MSNBC, CNN, you know, the, the ones that's, you know, batting for the Kamala team is even starting to ask, hey, when is she going to do some interviews? You know, what's her schedule today? You know, she has nothing today. Well, why can't she interview today? You know, and the same question, I mean, the same question is always answered the same way. She'll do one at the end of this month. Well, we got two more weeks of this month left, and they've been saying it for the first two weeks of this month. So it takes her 30 days to be prepared for one interview. Okay. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and as I say over and over again, share, share, share. Because your one share might just change the mind of one person to the good. As the great Bruce Lee once said, you drop a pebble into the water and watch the ripples grow. Be like water and share, share, share.